right, so sneak peek, this is the answer that you should get. Um, hopefully you were able to sort of derive this from, from what we've learned so far. But we're going to end up with the, the coefficient for uh, beta hat when using ridge regression is x transpose x plus lambda times i, the identity matrix, that whole thing inversed, times x transpose y. So this looks just like the normal beta coefficient, except we have this extra lambda value in, in, inside this uh, inverse part. And so what that does is not only does it help with the variance, but it solves our problem when x transpose x is an invertible. By basically adding this uh, lambda, we are able to always invert this matrix. And so lambda is known as a tuning parameter, and it is selected using cross-validation, which you have learned so far. So for example, you would choose the lambda that results in the smallest estimated test error. And so how do you think ridge regression fits into that bias-variance trade-off? Well, this is going to be, this whole class is pretty much about bias-variance trade-off, but it's going to fit in just like we've talked about so far where as lambda, our tuning parameter, goes up, our bias is going to increase, and our variance is going to decrease. And so basically we're trying to find that lambda value that's going to hit that sweet spot between our bias and our variance. And so I've calculated here the bias for our beta hat for ridge regression is equal to negative lambda times x transpose x plus lambda times the identity matrix i inverse times beta. And so if you look at this bias here, you can sort of get some intuition as to what this would be if lambda was equal to zero. And we can also look at the variance of, uh, of, of beta hat ridge. And that is equal to sigma squared times x transpose x plus lambda times the identity inverse times x transpose x times x transpose x plus lambda times the identity inverse. So coming back to our bias question, if lambda is zero, the bias is going to be zero. So we get, and if lambda is zero, as we remember from that, from looking at the original equation for ridge regression, we're just estimating beta hat like we would with least squares, which we know is an unbiased estimator. Looking at this variance, comparing that to what we know the variance is of, of, uh, of beta hat, our normal beta hat is sigma squared times x transpose x, do you think this is bigger or smaller? So let's look at when lambda is zero, if this was zero, this would be sigma squared times x transpose x. This would cross out inverse. And then it would be times x transpose x times x transpose x inverse. And so when you multiply anything by its own inverse, as we've talked about previously, it cancels out because that just becomes the identity matrix. And so if lambda is 0, then we end up getting back to the variance of our normal uh, beta hat, which is what we would expect. And so as as lambda goes to infinity, is this going to get bigger or smaller? It's going to get smaller because basically as lambda goes to infinity, we're adding a really big number to x transpose x. And when we take the inverse of that, that's sort of like dividing by a really big number, which is going to in turn make, uh, make the, the overall equation smaller. So an important note here and we're going to get in, in the next class into how to actually do this in R practically. But when doing ridge regression, it's really important to standardize your variables, which means divide by the standard deviation. And why do you think that is? So these beta coefficients are, they're penalized based on this constant penalty lambda. And so they all need to be on the same scale or else you would be penalizing variables just based on their scale as opposed to based on kind of whether or not they should really be penalized. For example, if you had a variable like age that increased in 10-year increments versus age that increased, like if you had maybe decade would be a better way to say it. So if you had a variable decade in your model, and so it was like 1, 2, 30, and each one corresponded to 10 years, a one-unit increase corresponds to a 10-unit increase, 
that's going to get penalized differently than if you had age that was in, that was uh, incremental by year. So, so somebody in the model that was 30, if age is parametrized as decade, would have a value of 3, which seems kind of small. But if it's parametrized by year, they're going to have a value of 30. So those beta coefficients are going to be really different depending on how you've parametrized your model, which is why you want to divide your uh, variables by their standard deviation to standardize them so that you end up being able to compare apples to apples when you're trying to penalize. So we're going to talk about how to do this practically uh, pretty soon in the next class, but hopefully you can sort of let this sink in a little bit on, on what this is doing um, uh, theoretically after this class.